Hey, this is Mad Matt from Budget Boosting. As you can see here, we got a turbo setup. And we're going to talk about how to set up a turbocharger, basically from A to Z. We're going to discuss most of this because I don't have any car that I have to convert to turbocharger right now, but I have a car that I completely converted to turbo. This was a 1979 280ZX. It never had a turbo from the factory, but I put one on. This car had fuel injection from the factory. I put a blow through turbo carburetor set up. And we've talked about turbocharging setups quite a few times on different videos. We'll refer to them, the blow through carburetor video and the draw through turbo video. We've talked in good detail and using props on how to set up a turbocharged car, but I'm gonna cover it from the top and to the end. Turbochargers A to Z. Now we've got this 1979 280ZX which I've converted to a turbo car. And we're going to go over some basics that you need. First off you need to pick a turbocharger and a T04E is a good turbo to start with because it comes with an internal wastegate built in it. So that takes one of the things away that you need. A turbocharger with internal wastegate or a wastegate of some sort. You need an exhaust manifold to bolt your turbocharger to. Like you look over here and here's the TO4E turbocharger right here. And the flange, you can't really see it because the exhaust manifold is under the intake manifold, but there's a four bolt T3 exhaust manifold flange. You bolt the turbocharger to. And you also need exhaust coming out of the turbocharger as well. So this is accomplished by a downpipe. After the turbo, after the engine pushes the exhaust into the turbo, spins the turbo, it needs a place to go, the downpipe, which lets it go to the rest of the exhaust system. Okay. And you also need your turbo boost hoses to go from your compressor discharge to your intercooler, back from your intercooler to your intake. And what this accomplishes is the exhaust from the turbo, by convection, heats up the compressor. That's something you cannot avoid. Your compressor is going to get hot, so hot boosted air is going to come out of the turbo's compressor. And the point of the intercooler is to cool that hot air. From here to here, it's going to start off hot. And by the time all this air to air intercooler, cooled air blows through, by the time it comes out of the intercooler, it's cold, cold air. And it'll go right to your tubing and into your engine. The colder the air, the colder the boosted air, the better fuel atomization, the more boost and power you can run. So that's the point in that. So you need lots of intercooler hosing, an intercooler, boost elbows, clamps, and for this blow through carburetor setup, you need a carb hat to allow the boosted air to get blown through the carburetor and into your intake manifold, into your engine. Okay, and for this setup you need a blow through carburetor. It's different than other carburetors because it's designed for air to be forced through. There's various ways to accomplish this, but I accomplished it by getting a specific made blow through carburetor. There's also some uh, people that make them custom as well. CNS Specialties, they make custom blow through carburetors. They're awesome. And uh, this is a, a good old carburetor made by Quick Fuel. You can buy these at Summit Racing all day for about 700 bucks. 650 blow through annular, blow through carb. Good stuff. Now we're going to walk over here. Other things you need for a turbo setup, you need your oil supply line. Now on this L28, the oil supply is on the side of the block. Normally, there's an oil pressure sender there, tapped into the block. But you have to tee off where it provides the oil pressure for your oil pressure sender, put into a T. So you get this little T for, you can buy oil supply and oil return kits on eBay for about like $30, $40. They come with your oil line, they come with your T, to T into the block, and you can also run your stock oil pressure sender too. See, it goes into the T, and then your oil pressure supply line is tapped off of this T, and goes into the turbocharger, right up here. So the oil supplied from the block 
goes into this oil supply line to the turbocharger. And on the very bottom of that is the oil return line. And it gets tapped into the top part of the oil pan, which I can show you this prop that we've set up. Here on this turbocharger here, I'm showing you a better detail of your oil supply line. It gets to the top of the turbo, it's bolted on by a little flange, and this comes with your oil, oil line kit that you can buy on eBay. You can buy an oil supply and return line on eBay for about $40. It comes with the oil line, comes with a fitting that bolts onto the TO4E or turbocharger that you pick. The oil return line, which bolts to the bottom of this turbo right here. There's your oil return line flange, and it goes to a pressure fitting, it goes to your oil pressure return line, and this goes to the oil pan. So I don't have a picture of an oil pan right here, but this, you tap a little fitting into the top of the oil pan, so your turbo has oil supply, oil returns to the top of the oil pan to be recycled through the engine again. Okay, so you also have your intake. On the intake on the compressor, the turbo supplies air to the turbocharger compressor. This fresh air gets compressed, and this is where it would go to the intercooler from the compressor discharge. And this place is your exhaust supply. The exhaust goes from your exhaust manifold to the turbo. Spins the turbo, and whatever's not being used gets delegated by the wastegate and to the downpipe to the rest of your exhaust system right here. So the exhaust goes from the engine, from the exhaust manifold, spins the turbo, whatever is being bypassed by the wastegate, you have a pressure sensor that puts the pressure from the compressor to the wastegate and whatever your wastegate is set at, like say eight pounds, Whatever exhaust is not being used for the eight pounds is going to be bypassed by this little wastegate and go right to the exhaust and from your downpipe to your muffler. So this is just an easier way to view it. And you can see it on the car right here. Again, compressor's inlets right here with this air cleaner. This is where the turbocharger gets the air, compresses it in the compressor, the compressed air goes to the turbo hoses. So basically compressor discharge through the hoses to the intercooler, from the intercooler nice and cool, through the hoses into your engine. So that's how your turbo boosted air gets from the air cleaner to your intake. And this is your intake manifold. This is the way the boosted air goes through the uh, carb hat, goes through, blows through the carburetor, goes into your intake, then your intake valves open and receive the boosted air with the fuel mixture. And that's how you get your forced induction for your engine. Other components you will need, and highly recommended, a boost sensing fuel pressure regulator. This one is made by Bosch. What it does is as the turbo boost increases, it puts more pressure on this Bosch fuel pressure regulator and ups the pressure for your fuel. So your fuel pressure can raise with your boost to give you the right amount of fuel with the right amount of boost. Now mind you, there's gonna be other tuning, tuning required to run the boost successfully with your engine. Now a low baseline boost is like six to eight pounds. That's a good safe pressure boost to run without a lot of tuning. But it's very important to do your timing, to adjust your timing to around 18 degrees before top dead center. That's a really good safe baseline boost, boost setting for your timing. Now you'll see some of our other videos describe this in more detail. Our carb jetting video, our uh, basics in turbocharging, blow through turbocharging, and draw through turbocharging. All these videos describe what you do once you do set up your turbo from A to Z. There's a lot of tuning required once you bolt on all your turbocharging equipment. A lot of tuning involved from when you bolt that on to when you start driving. So keep that all in mind. There's tuning you need to do before you start 
enjoying your boosted power, but I cover that in all kinds of other videos. This video today is just talking about Turbo Basics A to Z, the components you need to set up a turbocharger on your car. Remember, like always, if you have comments on our videos, click on the YouTube video and leave a comment like you've always been doing. If you have some questions about this video and others, please feel free to make a comment, rate it, all that good stuff. If you like our videos, like them on Facebook, like them on YouTube, so subscribe to YouTube, subscribe to our YouTube page because that helps us out. The more subscribers we get, the more videos we can make, and the more everybody benefits. And don't forget our window stickers, our budget boosting window stickers. Buy it now auctions on eBay for $20. Explore our budgetboosting.com website. There's all kinds of good information there and direct links to our videos. And as always, remember, knowledge is power. It's horsepower. Now, okay, we've talked about the external wastegate and how you hook up a boost controller. Basically, you go where the compressor housing is right here. You got this vacuum line going right in. This is direct pressure that the turbo is putting out. So you're starting from pressure coming from the, the compressor of the turbo. And as the compressor travels through this line, it opens the wastegate 